one time in the previous history of Non-League to Legend have I left the UK before completing the series. It, it didn't end well. We're not going back to France like we did many years ago. The German adventure starts today as we go and have fun in the Bundesliga with Hamburg. But of course, before we get stuck into the actual football side of things, we need to find out where we're going to be living when we get there. In fact, I need to find out where Hamburg is. Because I know, I know vaguely where Germany is, but I wasn't completely sure which part of Germany Hamburg was in. It turns out it's we're coming to the north. This might be one of the most northern places in the world I've ever been to. In real life, I've never been further north than Leeds. Hold on. It's slightly further south than Leeds. Actually, no, Blackpool's slightly... Blackpool is officially the furthest north I've ever been. Well, there you go. But, hmm, we're, we're going very north. It's going to be cold in Hamburg, I, th- I think. I was expecting, ah, we, we're going to Europe. It'll be fine. It'll be lovely and warm. I'm thinking south of France, lovely temperatures. No, northern Germany, practically Denmark. We're almost moving to Scandinavia. It is going to be cold. It's also going to be a ten and a half hour drive if we decide to drive there from Fulham. But I think with my new £39,000 a week salary, I can probably afford the £120 flight and it only takes an hour and 25 minutes. So you could argue that while I'm settling myself in and with my previous record for how terrible I am at managing clubs outside of England, it might be better to just carry on living in Fulham and commute. But no, I am going to commit to this properly. I am going to... I think we're at the point where I can keep my London apartment and with my new salary buy a second one over in Germany because if we go to the old faithful Halifax mortgage calculator based on my new salary I could borrow up to nine and a half million pounds. Now my Fulham apartment didn't cost anywhere near nine and a half million pounds and the most expensive property in Hamburg is only three and a half million so I think we can afford to keep both and in fact Let's have a look at this one. Three bedroom apartment for sale. I don't know what this is. I don't know what they're showing me here. I I mean, a greenhouse. Is that the big selling point of this property? Over three floors, new building, got a car park. It sounds smashing, but of course, I'm a wealthy man now. I need to make sure there's going to be enough chairs for me in this apartment. So let's have a look. Right, There's one. One chair. I mean, that it's pretty, but that doesn't help me decide if I want to live here or not. Oh, 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 five chairs now. We're up to five already, and we're only on the fourth photograph. Six. I don't have enough fingers. Does that count as a chair? I'm, st- I'm sticking with six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Is there more over here? Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen chairs. Nineteen. Plus somewhere to sit in the window. No, it's a bathroom. Another one of these. Th- I mean, we're 20. Who has 21? Who has two chairs just at the bottom of the stairs for no reason? I think it's fair to say there's going to be enough chairs for us here. We're moving to the greenhouse in Hamburg. Hopefully, hopefully we don't. How much? Carport purchase price, 59 and a half thousand euros. I might just fly. Hello and welcome to Club 5, part 1 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we are going to play our first two matches in charge of Hamburg in the Bundesliga. A um, couple of pieces of news since we met the team for the first time at the end of the last Fulham episode yesterday. Um, firstly, the team itself has already played a game this season and lost, so we need to right that wrong, right up front. And also, the German transfer window is still open. I've not managed to bring anyone in yet, but I have four potential transfers that I'm going to try and bring in before the deadline closes tomorrow. I've got £12 million worth of transfer budget, loads of spare wage budget, and very much going for the youngsters that my that the new board want me to do. So this guy, Jan Masej, we couldn't get Kubic from Fulham, by the way, or Kubic. Uh, but this guy... Very much in the same mould. 18-year-old, current Czech international, who is already potentially a four-star player. Some of those are greyed out, but he's better than any other defender we've got at the club, with potential to improve. 
And I mean, he would just come in and be our best defender straight away at age 18. He's we've had an offer accepted for six hundred thousand pounds for him. If we can get him in, that's going to be cracking. This guy, my um, my uh, director of football, is trying to bring in because he does youth signings. Apparently, he's only fifteen. Another one with five star potential. I'm not going to say no. These last two are me though, Alexander. Eberharter, the first one was me as well. I'm not leaving it all to my director of football. Just that one youngster. 20-year-old Austrian central midfielder who is already almost as good as our two best central midfielders, one of which is going to be playing for us on the wing. So would probably come straight into our first team. Um, he's at Sturm Graz at the moment. And last one is Klaus Zimmer, who's another 18-year-old Austrian midfield player who is almost as good as those two that we just talked about. He's currently at Salzburg and has never played a game, but we could pick him up for less than two million quid. If we can bring those four in, it gives us the extra strength in midfield that we need, gives us another defender. Ideally, we'd still sign another defender because if we look at the team we're going to be playing today, we are quite weak in all these areas. Attacking-wise, we're golden. We've got good wingers, a couple of good attacking midfielders, a very good striker, Scottish striker, incidentally, Fraser Sharp. £28.5 million pound value who was signed from Rangers last year. Did, only scored four goals last season, but is somehow still worth £28.5 million. Pounds. I don't really know how that's worked, and I don't really get what Swansea see in him at that kind of price when he only scored four goals. But we're going to get we're going to turn that man into a goal machine. But it's it's back here that we struggle. We're playing a winger, and I don't even know what he is. A winger and a defensive midfielder are going to be our midfield too. And then at the back... We've got a whole bunch of players. Who, I mean, he's a right back who's going to play at centre back. Another centre back option would be this left back, but we've got to play him at left back. We need defenders. We need midfielders, and hopefully, we're going to get that sorted between these two matches. But this is our team for the first game. We're going with a four-two-three-one. It's the standard control possession system. We've added some personalised um, role instructions. We've not done per, like individual player instructions. But I've tried to match this as best as possible to the actual preferred roles of the players. But as an example, this guy, who, I mean, he can't do anything in midfield. But if we look at other options that we've got, we don't really have any. This guy is out on loan at the se for, for the season in Italy and we can't recall him. He's injured. So he's our best option. Oh, actually, that's not by there you go, role ability. He's a winger who's already playing in midfield. These two are injured. He's out on loan. That's why we need new midfield players. So this is our team. We've got Furuya in goal. And obviously we'll get to know these players as time goes on. We're not going to get too bogged down in all of them now. Fried Friedel? Friedler? Um, Bayer, Escobedo and Hadrovic at the back. Ad Adley and Mori in midfield. Sharp, of course. So I know how to say his name as well. And then Ito, Liberali and Chaton. Chaton? Is he French? Swiss. Chaton probably then. Um, as our attacking midfielders, I've lost the t I've lost the team. I mean, this does not bode well. In my in my first uh, press conference announcing me as manager, they've already said, "Kev, you don't speak German, and you can't say player names at the best of times. What are you doing here?" And all I oh, I just sat there talking about chairs in my new flat and flying back to Fulham every now and again. Right, um, I guess we have to do a passionate start. Um, let's show the world what this team is all about. I like that as a team talk. I've never seen that one before. But we are live on TV. Our next game is live on TV as well. We're away against Schalke, Schalke in the second match of today's episode. And that's where our former manager went. So we're going to have a point to prove against Schalke. But I don't even know which ones we are. We're the white ones, are we? I think we are. Because we don't have Odegaard in our team, which they presumably do by the looks of it. But I have no idea of how good we're going to be. Looking historically, Hamburg are a mid-table-ish Bundesliga team. But they did win both Cups last season, which is why we're in the Europa League this year. Um, we missed Fulham in the draw, sadly. And I, I just don't see that this is a Europa League quality team. Obviously, it's not close to the quality of the Fulham team we've just left behind. But my hope is, if we can bring in a bunch of youngsters, we can... At least get that top half finish for this first season and then start building from there. And there is Fraser Sharp, third goal of the season already. He might not have been scoring goals last season, but this year he's already become a goal scorer. And that's his first goal, the first goal for Kev in Germany. And of course, it was scored by a Scott because 
we weren't going to have a German score it, were we? I don't know how to say any of their names. Or have we even got any Germans in this team? There's a lot of a lot of names that don't look very German to me. Um, I need to see the team again. It's very complicated. Um, right, do any of these names look German? Him, probably. I think he's probably German. Are you German? No, you're Austrian. For goodness sake. I don't think we've got... We'll have a look in a minute between the two games. I don't think we've got any German players. How have we got away with that? How does the Bundesliga squad registration work? Are these all half-registered thing? I know what I'm trying to say. Right, Mori kicks the ball forward towards Sharp. Sharp is clear again. He's a quick and strong... We've got a player there in Fraser Sharp. Oh, I'm very excited about him. Free, Friedel, I think we're going to call him Friedel, who's our left back slash centre back. I looked at what my assistant manager thinks his best role as a centre back is, and along with three of the other centre backs at the club, which is part of the problem, their best role at centre back would be libero. I am not playing a, a back four. Or a, you can't pick a libero in a back four. In a back four, I don't think. But I'm not playing liberos. What do they think this is? And if they're the kind of defenders that we've got, that's why we need new defenders in urgently. We want to go back to the system we used at Fulham. We want a ball-playing defender and a thug. So I think I might see if Shane Duffy's available. I already accepted a £275,000 offer for him. So I wonder if Fernando Morientes will accept a similar amount, assuming they've not made a permanent appointment yet at Fulham. I might be able to drag Shane Duffy, at aged, what, 35 is he now? Over to be my thug here as well to go alongside that young lad that we're hopefully going to bring in. Sharps in again. It's his second goal already. 28 minutes on the clock. It's Wolfsburg nil, Hamburg 2. And we seem like we're, we're quite a good team so far. I'm expecting it to all go wrong very soon, especially because our tactical familiarity was pretty low for this. I went through all the different tactical presets, trying to find one that had a high tactical familiarity as a starting point. None of them did. The only information I've got is that the team were previously playing a 4-2-3-1. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll go with the 4-2-3-1 that they're used to playing and just put my system that we used at Fulham on top of it. And, I mean, it... <laughs> We will wait and see how it works, I guess. But Wolfsburg now have a goal back, and they've just they've cut through us as if we've got a defence made up of fullbacks and liberos, which of course is exactly the situation that we're in. We need at least one centre back as a matter of urgency. Ideally, I'd bring in two, but I've only got a week a week to start my scouting and do any transfers that I want to do. Luckily, we obviously have quite a good scouting setup here at the club because the first set of scout reports that came in after like three days had all of those youngsters in, which is pretty handy. But what they didn't have is any proper first team quality players. But then I guess with £12 million to spend, we could only bring in one at most if we did it that way. And we need more than one player. So I'm pretty happy doing it the way we do it as long as we get these players in. Right, let's... Let's assertively say, yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to get complacent. We're ahead. We're looking good. Let's let's go on and win the game. We've had sixty six percent of the possession in this match. We should really be scoring at least a couple more goals with that kind of possession. The problem is Wolfsburg have had more shots than us, so we're keeping the ball a lot, but not doing very much with it when we've got it, which is isn't ideal. But then they've got Odegaard in their team, who's tearing us apart. I don't. How is this fair? You've seen the quality of play that we've got. We've got championship quality left backs playing at centre back for us. They've got Odegaard tearing us apart. We seem to have a very lopsided team. Our star striker is on Swansea's radar. And, you know, he scored four goals last year. Yes, he scored two today. But that's the level we're at. And then they've got him. And it just it feels like cheating to me. And I don't know what position any of these players play in to try and make some changes. We will obviously try, but we've been Odegaarded today and it's it's not a lot of fun. Oh, he's calm, is he? As long as he's calm, I don't want him to get all stressed out. I want him to get off the pitch. Yeah. Right. Sven Shaton. This guy can play out there, apparently. I don't know what position he actually is. He's a striker. Ah, get out there and play on the wing. What's the worst that can happen? Liberali, have we got... Right, Van Emmerich. What are you? You're also... We've got a lot of strikers, it seems. Get on there and play 
as an attacking midfielder, you'll be fine. <laughs> Let's see how see how those. Ch I think we've just made the team considerably worse, and uh, I don't expect us to win this game from this point. But you never know; these two extra strikers we've thrown on might have goals in them. We shall see. Don't judge me until I've got my new players in. Hopefully I get my, my four new players come in before the next match and then I can feel a little bit more confident that we've got something other than attacking players, which I think is all we've got at the moment. And we just we can't defend. We are really struggling to defend. It does make me think that it would make sense to put a defensive midfielder in. The only problem is we don't have one that's any good. And by doing that, we sacrifice a role that would have been filled by one of our better players who's an attacking player. So it seems logical to play as many of the attacking players as possible because we've got lots of them who are quite good. But in doing so, we've left ourselves open to this at the back. And I think this is going to be a very porous defence until we can figure out a way to fix it. Right. Adley to Mori. Van Emmerich, so he's one of the strikers playing out of position. Mori, who can play as a defensive midfielder, but isn't very good at that either. He's just not really very good at anything. I don't expect to use him very much. This is where he goes on to become a star. I mean, he can't. we could do that. What, what else can you do? I don't like doing this, and it's, it feels a little bit late to be doing this anyway. But I guess we could stick him there like that. We probably don't want him to be defensive if we're doing that. So make him that. It's a bit late to be making a change like that. Friedel is having a terrible game. I think we've got another left back on the bench. Douglas Santos can come on and play at left back for us. And I don't know. What should we do? Should we show some passion? We're on telly for goodness sake. Show some passion. We're also hovering around the relegation zone. Two games into the season. But one of them wasn't my fault. We started brightly in this game. And then we just let them back into it by not having a defence. Which, like I said, should be fixed before the Schalke game. Or at least we should bring in at least one defender. But let's... I'm not happy with that. We need to be better than that. Don't like losing my first game at a new club. Now I need to sign some players. Well, if I've learned anything from those transfers, it's that our scouts are absolute trash. Um, I've signed Shane Duffy as well. You're about to see that. Um, but, oh my word. Remember how good these four players looked? We have signed them all. Remember how good they looked on the scout reports? Well, Klaus Zimmer is actually a two-star player who is our sixth best central midfielder now. He's not He's not competing with these guys. No, he's, he's our sixth best central midfield player. Um, Lukacevic... I mean, he's actually he's still only 15 and could actually be quite good. Massage, the guy who was going to come in and be our best centre-back, he's our eighth best centre-back, and we've accepted a season-long loan offer for someone for him. Um, Eber Harter, he's, he's probably the pick of the bunch, but still only the fourth best central midfielder we've got. Uh, but don't worry, we've got Shane Duffy, who comes in as our best centre-back. I said I wanted a player like Shane Duffy, we managed to get him for 675000 only on a two-year contract as well. So he's got an option for a one-year extension, but I've, I've also saved Fulham and got them out of his five-year contract that some idiot gave him. The transfer window is open for another few hours. We have got a little bit more money. I do not trust my scouts at all. So what I often, people often say, Kev, how do you get your director of football to do loans for you? Um easy peasy you go into this screen and you just put find and make offers for players for your first team make that your director of football and then i just ignore permanent players and only accept the loans that he brings in for the rest of today's transfer window i'm if he if he makes an offer for anybody permanent or loan i will take it because i now trust him more than my scouts who i'm tempted to sack them all but we'll yeah just dirty Director of Football didn't bring anyone in at all in the end. So after all that kerfuffle, we've basically got the same team um, with a couple of exceptions. Obviously, Shane Duffy comes in and starts. Um, I don't remember who else we had in the back four last time. I've tried so many combinations to try and get players into their best positions. Look at the amount of injuries we've got. This is, this is something to deal with. 
Um, Ito has joined the injury list as well, which means we don't actually have anybody who can play out in his left wing. So despite being good as a striker in the last game, Fraser Sharp is our best option to move out there. So Van Emmerich comes in up front. Um, and I've changed the midfield to have Mori as an anchor man. Adley, I don't really know what to do with him. I've got him as a deep line playmaker at the moment. I could, I don't know. I don't know. I do not know what to do with him. Um, so the team is Farah, Faruya in goal, Friedel, Zagadou, Duffy and Hadrovic at the back. Mori anchoring Adley as the midfield. A one-man midfield. It's gradually drifted. We need another midfielder so we can just drift it towards what we were using at Fulham. It feels like a much more sensible system. We just don't have the midfield players to do it. Um, and then Sharp, Liberali, Chaton and Van Emmerich as our attacking quartet. And we need to give a squad number to Shane Duffy. Number 41, which is, I imagine, the age he'll be when his contract expires, because I'll no doubt keep extending it. But remember, this is this is our former manager managing Schalke. So it does confirm he liked a 4-2-3-1 for himself. It looked like looks like he maybe had a defensive one with two, two defensive midfielders in there. That's interesting. I wonder if we could maybe try that. That might be a way to shore things up a little bit. Um... So let's calmly say we're un we're underdogs. We are underdogs. He wouldn't have left if we were a better team. I wonder if we've got the players to be able to stick someone deep alongside Mori. And re in fact, I want to look. I want to look now. Who else have we got? You can play as a defensive midfielder. Um, how would I look at that? I'd look here and see. Not really. We're just really low on players. And I messed up the transfer window completely. And now after 17 seconds, um, that wasn't Duffy, was it? I think that was Zagadou missing his header. If Duffy comes in and starts missing headers, then I might just resign and get on that £120 plane back to Fulham. Um, they've appointed Giovanni Van Bronckhorst as their new manager. So hopefully he won't last long and I can just go home because... I'm already afraid of the Bundesliga. Right, Mori plays the ball forward towards Sharp, who heads it into the area of Van Emmerich, who can't get onto the end of it. This feels like it's probably been a very long episode today. Should I have just done one match? I'll decide. when we If we've won this one, then it was well worth showing you too, because I've turned the team around if we lose this one as well. Oh, my word. It's like tour all over again. I should never leave the UK. I was all right when I went to Hamilton in Scotland a few years ago, but I just can't manage outside the UK. I can't cope with it. That adaptability of one is probably always going to be a little bit of a problem. Adaptability of one and can't speak the language. What's going on here? Oh, we're in a country that has the little tellies. How exciting. Um, do we have, so we're watching the watching. What are we even? Why is it in doubt? Was he offside? Because, I mean, he's obviously not offside. So what else? What are we looking at here? I don't want to see the replay again. That, I mean, that seemed like an epic waste of time. Why does VAR exist? Hope that doesn't happen too often. Right, Duffy. Love, love having Shane Duffy back in the team. Worried that he's come in as our best defender, though. It shows the standard of the rest of our defence. Sharp has done brilliantly there, though, cutting in from the left-hand side. Forces a save out of the Schalke keeper. We need a goal here. We can't go. We can't end the episode in the relegation zone. With, I mean, I won't make it to the next transfer window. And I've spent most of the money on trash anyway. Imagine being a Hamburg fan in this situation. This unknown English buffoon has turned up and bought a greenhouse that's full of chairs. You've you've looked at his history. You're called Hamburger. And this is a fellow who used to manage a vegan football club. You don't trust me. And I understand that. I don't trust myself. Um, let's... Yeah, assertively be underdogs, because what's the worst that could happen? We're not very good, are we? Mmm. There's going to be much pondering to be done over the weekend while I decide while I decide what to do with my life from here. I think we might have had our, our first proper misstep of non-Leeds Lens. And I know some of you consider moving from Bristol Rover, moving to Bristol Rovers from Forest Green a bit of a misstep because it didn't go well, but it did ultimately lead to Fulham. So it was for the best eventually. I'm struggling to see an upside to this move already. It's episode one at the new club. Fraser Sharp, he might be the upside. If we can grab a goal here, show a bit of resiliency against one of the better teams in the division, then I'll stop being so afraid. I'm, I'm afraid of change. 
Um, they've got a player injured, which is always positive. And Sharp, just showing me that he shouldn't be... Wa he's wasted out on the left wing. We need to get him up front. We need to get our wingers fit again. We need to get all of those players fit again. I think once we've got this injury list back, we might actually find out we're not too bad. We won both Cups last season, after all, and it's a squad that hasn't really changed since then. There haven't been any major transfers out over the summer, I don't think. I didn't notice any. So it's the basis of a squad that won a lot of stuff last year. But right now, we just don't look very good at all. Their manager was obviously a genius, and he's showing it again today by putting a performance. He knows how to play against us. I wish... I wish we knew what his system was so that we could do it. Just copy him. Right, Van Emmerich's not playing very well at all. We're going to get Sharp up front. And we are going to... We are going to... Marvin Lang, you should be able to play out there. There you go, you can play out there. Sorted. You're not very good, so you can come off for... Yep, nobody. We haven't got anyone who can come on for you. Hmm... I mean, what's the point of him? Why does he exist? A right, a left midfielder slash wing back. I'm not going to... I mean, he looks like quite a good player. He's just never going to ever, ever get into my team because I'm not going to use a player here or here. He needs to be able to play at the other two extreme. Let's try him at left back. He's not very good. I mean, okay, do that then. You can't do that either. What are you then? Useless. Utterly Useless. Play left back and like it. Right. We've got to find a way back into this game. Show some passion. <laughs> what what else can we do here? Liberali's not playing very well. Have we got a midfielder? I wonder if... Are either of these defensive midfielders primarily? He's an accomplished one. Is he the guy I just signed? You're a right back. So I'm going to bring this guy on. I just want to see how this looks as a system. Potentially get him up there. Because he's a winger. We've been playing him out of position. But we could do that. I'm just... I'm fiddling and trying to figure things out here. So you be the anchor man. You be a Segundo Volante. And you be that it can't be any worse surely it's going to give us a lot more defensive protection and I don't know we figure out how to score goals from there we can't get the ball back give us the ball my word have we given away a penalty there no we haven't good they've had a player sent off right it is all to play for boys and girls demand more they're focused. Come on. I smell a winner. He says with a flat back six. I can't believe. I've spent two weeks in Europe and I'm already doing a flat back six. What have I become? Mori, over to Lang. We've got Sharp in the middle. Plays it back to Ozturk, who's obviously well out of position. Shut on. Straight at the keeper. Ah. Hadrovic can't get the ball back. I like it. Um. Are we going to score here? Mori, last chance of the game. I mean, we've looked better since we're switching the system around. Can't hide from the fact we've lost our first three games of the season, though. There is much work to do here at Hamburg. And yay, we get to play in the Europa League now and probably lose in that. Right, when are we going to come back for our next episode? We're not going to leave it too long because I get the feeling we're not going to be at Hamburg for too long. So you might as well get half a dozen episodes out of it before I'm sacked. So let's do Luda Goretz and Borussia Mönchengladbach as our next games. I don't want to go away against Bayern Munich and have you see that happen. It's going to be a massacre. Whereas this stuff, Luda Goretz, we might score some goals. Gives me four games to figure out a tactic and come back to you on Monday looking like a genius. Easy. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.